Today, I want to talk to you about prayer. You know? Kanina, you know, in, in times of, ano, kanina pa lang sa umpisa pa lang, exhortation ng ating uh, worship leader, is that we need to trust God, whatever situation. When, when you are faced, just like what we heard from Christelle, our um, sister that uh, uh, testified earlier, during those times, no, na parang bottom line, narinig nyo yun, kaya nga talagang, Yung being in, in the Lord, in the relationship with God, it's not guaranteed na your life will be easy, right? That your life will be free of any conflict, any uh, difficulties, any testing trials, all sorts of things, amen? Even all the more they come from all sides, front, back, side, right, and left, you know? Because the enemy doesn't want you to grow in your relationship with God. So what do you do during those times? You all the more trust in God. You all the more get into the presence of God. You all the more pray. Even if you need to, to, to cry out before the Lord. You need to prostrate before the Lord. You know? That's what we do. And prayer, as you have heard so many times, it is very important in the Christian life. Actually, I've preached one uh, entitled Essential. It's very essential in the life of a Christian, their prayer. Amen? Being prayerful. So in the passage, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23, we will be talking there about the prayer of Paul. But I entitle this, let us remember when we pray, the, the condition of our heart is very important. You know? That our heart are expectant. Our heart is, is, is right before God. Amen? Because if our heart is not right before God, if our heart is filled with stress, filled with, um, alam mo yung masama ang loob mo sa Lord? Alam mo, nagtatampo ka sa Lord? You might miss what God is saying to you, speaking to you when you seek the Lord in His presence. Amen? And His presence. So, here I entitled, Hearts Enlightened. Let us go to the Word of God. Let us all together read, okay? That even as we read this, let it speak into your heart and you will receive it in your spirit. The message of the Lord for us. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 to 23. Let us all together read. Therefore I also... After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come 
and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over thing over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all hallelujah this is your word oh god and your you and your word are one let your word minister to your people, O oh God. Let it be, O oh God, that like that of a double-edged sword that will penetrate, O oh God, the hearts of your people that will transform us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. It will be you who will minister to your people. It is you. You see them, O oh God, from inside out, O oh God. And so have your way in this worship service, even as I deliver your word, O oh God. Let every word that come out of our, my mouth, O oh God, is just like your word declared and proclaimed upon your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. And so this is Paul writing. You know, here... Paul started in this um, passage by mentioning, by really appreciating, kung baga pa, ina um, ano ba ang tawag dyan? Uh, ina-acknowledge niya. Ina-acknowledge niya yung spiritual growth standing ng kanyang pinagsasabihan, itong church na to, Ephesians, no? That sabi ni Paul, that I've heard of your faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints. So, makikita natin dito na mention, tinatch ni, ni Paul doon yung relationship first, vertical. You know? Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi, yun nga, uh, I've, I've talked about essential already. It is one of the basic of the Christianity, our faith in the Lord. You can never, you, you cannot go farther, you know? You cannot be deeply rooted in your relationship with, your, with God without faith. Amen? So here, mention ni, ni Paul, in acknowledge ni Paul, ang relationship, ang faith ng mga, ng church. Toward God, their vertical relationship, and that is their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But that does not stop there. Again, we always hear this, you know? Ano nga yung a greatest commandment? Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and love your neighbors. So, kumbaga pa, first love God, and now love your your brethren love others no horizontal relationship because you can you cannot you cannot proclaim you cannot shout at the top of your lungs i love you lord when you don't even say hi we don't you don't even smile it's like oh everyone that you see parang wala lang Parang enemy sa'yo, it, it doesn't matter to you. You cannot. You cannot. It's always go together. Your love upon God and your love upon people. Amen? And so here, kinomend ni Paul here, ang saints, no? Love to those people around. You know, sabi nga, di ba? Reminder sa atin, how can you love God that you don't see? And you say, you know? And you don't love others. Yung mga tao na nakikita mo, nakakasalamuha mo, na you work with, with them side by side. Amen? And so here, Paul, do not cease, sabi ni Paul, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So all the more, you know? Alam mo, alam na alam ni Paul. Although, nakikita niya yung growth ng church, the relationship, they're doing good. Pero alam mo, yan nga eh, talaga, natural yan, na today you're good, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Ang testimony ni Christel, imagine, nagpa-baptize. Today, during the camp yun ha, ng, ng last year pa, last, last, last year. 
nagpabaptize. And then, after that nga, eh, nag, nag ano kami, bakit na wala si Kristen? <laughs> no? There were, there were Sundays that we cannot see her. We, we haven't seen her. Kasi the enemy, again, we go back that there is an enemy that roaring like a lion. Amen? And Paul know that as spiritual, as their spiritual leaders. Kaya nga talaga, leaders. Tinawag ka, naging leader ka for, for nothing. Amen? Paul, being their leader, do not neglect to pray for them. Sabi niya, mentioning, mention you in my prayers. Ano ang prayer ni Paul sa kanila? Sa church, here, in verse 17, that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So in other version of the Bible, it says, um, hearts enlightened. Amen? So, understanding being enlightened, kasi no matter what, how you pray, kung hindi natin na, na gigets, hindi, we, 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 like our hearts are not ready, are not right before God. Para, it's like a ball that is bouncing back. Amen? Do you, have you experienced that? That sometimes you want to seek the Lord, you're reading the Word of God, but the, it seems like there's nothing. Walang, walang spark, walang uh, impression, no meaning at all. Amen? So maybe you are full of things of this world. Amen? So hearts enlightened. It is very, it's always, you know, it always goes back to the condition of our heart. Amen? You know, God looks at our heart. No matter what, like, like we can be good in appearance. We can, be, we can seem to be like doing well, functioning well. But nobody can tell what the condition, what really is the condition of your heart. Nobody can tell, but you know, there is a God, there is a God that can see what really is in your heart. So the prayer of Paul, because Paul knew that no matter how hard he would pray for his people, when their hearts are not right before God, it's not effective. You know, when you pray, there are many Bible verses I did not include. There are so many Bible verses that says that repent first, repentance first. Make your heart holy and pure before God first. This is me. My name is Caleb and I'm on the line. Yes, Caleb, very good. Yes, hey, hey, hi everyone. Okay, let's go first. You go to the Sunday school, Caleb. Hallelujah. Lovely boy. You know, um, they are special in the eyes of God, and so we welcome them. God, Jesus loves them very, very much. Amen? So, hallelujah. Let's continue. The heart. So, we're talking about the heart. Our hearts being pure and right before God. Even David, you know, even David. David is very well known of being a worshiper. A worshiper, you know, dancing without shame before God because he just loved to worship God. And even David acknowledges that he has to come before the Lord with a pure heart. Amen? So, there, Paul prayed, prayed for the church to have their hearts being enlightened. The eyes 
of their hearts, the, the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. So, when your heart, ito, ang karugtong niyan is that you may know. Amen? Sabi ko nga kanina, parang minsan walang pumapasok, di ba? Like, like we, we, we don't get anything from our quiet time, from our reading. But when your hearts are being enlightened, here, Paul said that you may know. Amen? You may know that we may understand. Hallelujah. So, here, again, let, let me go back about prayer. You know, Paul is prayerful. You know, in other uh, letter of Paul, like in Colossians, he always mentioned that I pray for you. So, I pray for you unceasingly. So, being constant in prayer. Let's go to Ephesians 6.18. Sabi dyan, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To the end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Here, we say, when to pray. Amen? When to pray. All times, at all times, unceasingly, be constant always. Amen? So we just don't pray on Wednesdays, on Fridays, on Saturdays. We pray all the time. Kaya nga sabi that we are battling, we are experiencing a lot of things here on earth. And we need to pray, 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 pray. All the time. And that's what Paul does. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer supplication. How? You know, prayer with all supplication. And whom to pray for all the saints. What do we do in our prayer intercession? We just don't pray for ourselves. You know, maybe every day we pray for our needs. You know, but... Corporate prayer, we pray for one another. We pray for the church. We pray for the brethren. We pray for our children. We pray for our youth. We pray for our young professional. We pray for our parents. Amen. Amen. We pray for one another. Why do we do this? Because we need it. We need, do you acknowledge you need prayer? Do you need prayer? Yes. So let our prayer enter. But you know what? Not just the, the prayer ministry has to pray. Everyone has to pray. Amen. Amen? Because again, sa babagitin ko ulit, hindi lang, we are not in the time na yung mga Levites lang ang may access in the presence of God. Everyone has access in the presence of God. We have access to the throne of grace. Amen? And so everyone should pray for one another. How, when, how, and whom to pray. Amen? So here, Paul in verse 17, again, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom in the revelation in the knowledge of Him. So the prayer of Paul is for wisdom and revelation. You know, that's the essence of our quiet time when we read the, we read the Bible so that we may know the will of God. We may have wisdom. Bucket, why do we need wisdom? What is wisdom? Godly wisdom? In very simple um, explanation so that you know what is what right thing to do what is the right thing to do at a given situation or circumstances that is wisdom not just knowledge but wisdom is the experience of God when you experience God you would know what to do we need that because we Human being has a tendency to do what is wrong, right? Do you want to be wrong? Do you want to make a wrong decision? 
Because wrong decision spells what? Destruction. Like calamity. You know? And you will feel sorry. At pag feel sorry mo, nagawa mo na yung decision, can you take it back? Can you erase it? Our sins can be erased because that's what God did through Jesus Christ. Can be erased, can be forgotten, but the consequences cannot be, be, be forgotten. You cannot be exempted from the circumstances of what you have done. Amen? So it's just like cause and effect. You did something and there will be effect. Amen? There will be, um, um, what do you call this? Um, fruit, like effect. Amen? You will reap what, you, what your hands has, has done. Amen? The work of your hands. So prayer for wisdom and revel revelation in the knowledge of Him. So revelation so that we can apply it in our life. Hallelujah. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 12, it says there, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person? which is in him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us. So it is very important, the revelation. Amen? Because God has many things for us. God has blessed us with all these spiritual blessings, all these blessings that we need, and even more. But if we, we don't receive the revelation, if we don't understand it, if we don't have the wisdom to receive and to carry it out, this will be nothing. It will be like useless. Amen? That is why it is very important wisdom and revelation coming from the Lord. And you know what? You, just, you don't just wait for your leaders, you know, for your pastor to tell you this is it, to feed you of the Word of God and the will of God. But you also have to work on it. Because God can speak to you directly. You know, our God is a personal God. God can speak to you directly. God can use you. Amen? God can give you the vision. Hallelujah. So it is very important. Let us seek the wisdom of God and the revelation through our prayer and through our reading of the word of God. Amen? So, sabi dito, and the Spirit, sabi ko nga kanina, that no one knows what's in your heart, what is seated deep in your heart, except for God and except for you. This is what it is says, said there. And so, the Spirit of God revealing to us, you know, that when you go back a few verses before, and that the guarantee the guarantee of our hope, of our salvation, of our eternal, um, 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 what do you call this? Eternal, um, yung pupuntahan natin. Destination. Our eternal destination, the guarantee is the Holy Spirit. Amen? The guarantee is the Holy Spirit. So let us, you know, Pray in spirit. Let us seek of that wisdom and revelation that comes from the Lord. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So by the Spirit who is from God, what we might understand, that we might understand the things freely. Diba? Freely given us by God. Hallelujah. 
So these are all these things, you know? You know, God is rich. His grace, He is... Parang hindi mo ma-measure. In the song earlier that we cannot measure the goodness of God, you know? Even His, His, His faithfulness, the things that He has for us is immeasurable. Amen? It's so wide. It's so great. Can you, re, can you like think or put yourself in that situation? Like imagine. Pero you know, again, ulit lagi ko to sinasabi, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has comprehended what God can do to those who love Him. So even though you are expecting of something, God can do beyond that. God can do beyond that, beyond your expectation, beyond you can think of. Hallelujah. That is our God. And all these things are available for us. We only need to pray, to ask. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, another thing, the prayer of Paul is that for us to know the future hope that we have in Christ. Sabi doon sa, sa verse 18, di ba? Let's go back to verse 18. I did not. Sabi doon sa verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what, what is the hope of His calling. And here in Ephesians 4.4, sabi dyan, there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. So the hope in the future hope. What is it? The hope. To know the hope. What is our hope? You know? Our hope, it goes back. Ang, ang pinaka-hope natin is to be with God For eternity, our future hope. We should know that no matter what the situation, our destination is not just this. There is a destination where no more struggles. Amen? Where we can enjoy the presence of God, where we can enjoy the fruit of our obedience. Amen? Of our obedience when we were here still in, in this earth. Amen? The hope, the future hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And also in Colossians 1.5, it says there, Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel. So salvation, you know these three things, faith, hope, and love. You know, we, um, we attain, we have this hope when we have relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? We have hope in the Lord, hope to, be, to have this eternal, um, eternal um, what do you call this? Destination. Eternity with Jesus when we have, like, like even right here on earth, we are already having this relationship with Jesus. No matter ano pang pag-uusapan natin, whatever we talk about here, if you don't have Jesus in your life, there, walang, walang, ano, walang ano to, effect sa inyo. Walang saysay. Amen? Walang saysay sa buhay natin lahat ng pinag-uusapan natin if we don't have Jesus in our life. But right now, I know that we are all here because we have Jesus. We want to um, deepen our relationship with Jesus. And even those who are joining us online, if you have joined us for the first time and you've just been hearing this message for the first time, I would like you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior because that is the basic. Amen? You can start from that. 
Jesus as your Lord and Savior at ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos is that you only have to open your heart before God. Acknowledge that Jesus is the Lord and the Savior of your life. Believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. Amen? And you will be, and, and kasama ka, you will belong to the family of God and you will be called a child of God or children of God. Amen? If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and all these things, these spiritual blessings, all this hope that we're talking about, the future hope, it can be yours too. Amen? Hallelujah. So, because of the hope laid up in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel. So, God's inheritance in the saints. So, Paul also is praying for us to know. Amen? Kaya nga, di ba? Knowledge is power. We have to know all these things. So, God's inheritance in the saints. So, verse 18 din yan. Sabi dyan, ulit, that they may know that what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Inheritance. Lagi din natin ito makikita. We, we see this in the, the Word of God. Inheritance. What is inheritance? Pamana, like being passed on to you from your parents, from your forefathers, from God. So here, sinasabi dito in <clears throat> verse 11 of Ephesians 1, In Him, we have obtained an inheritance. Him is Jesus, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. So in Him, inheritance through Jesus Christ, the inheritance. That's why I said earlier, it always goes back to what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Amen? What is this inheritance? Inheritance of eternity. Eternal life through Jesus Christ in Him. So we have this inheritance only through Jesus. So again, you have to have Jesus as your Lord and Savior for you to inherit eternal life. So have, in verse 14, same chapter, verse 1, uh, chapter 1, who is the guarantee of our inheritance? I've told you earlier, it is the Holy Spirit. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory? Acquire possession until He comes again. The second coming of Jesus until we meet Jesus face to face on that day. Amen? So the guarantee is the Holy Spirit. Do you want to inherit eternal life? Amen? Maybe we're not thinking about it so much right now because we're enjoying life here on earth. But life is not all about here. Amen? What's more important, again, I've, I know you've heard this before. We are, we are just but pilgrims here on earth. We are just passing by here on earth. You know, you're here now and may be gone tomorrow. Hallelujah. I have a, a story about that, but maybe next time. So, guarantee. Next is that we, the prayer of Paul is that we have to know, for us to know, the power that we have in Christ. Verse 19, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power? So again, Paul here is using powerful words, you know? Exceeding, exceeding na greatness pa, amen, of His power. You know how much, how, how powerful it is. How exceedingly or immeasurable 
power God has for His people, again, it is not gonna take effect in us if we what don't believe. What is the key word there? What is the key word there? Because even just a little power, you're gonna be good. Amen? To get by, let alone exceeding greatness. If you don't believe, it will not be yours. Narinig natin sa mga testimony natin, we just have to, to go on, move forward, continue to believe, do not give up. Amen? Do not give up according to us who believe. First, we need to believe. And then if we believe, what is available to us? Not just so-so power of God, but the greatness, exceeding greatness power of God. Hallelujah. So we are talking, always talking about being empowered. You know, this is the verse of our uh, anniversary. Empowered, great, exceeding greatness power of God in us, toward us. Do you want to be powerful? You know, hindi tayo, lagi natin naririnig din to sa preaching last meeting natin, Global Leaders Meeting, di ba? Exor- ang, ang preaching ni, ni Pastor Stephen, sabi niya that leaders, pastors, are not superman. We are not superman. Like, we have limitation. But we can do anything. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are not Superman because when you say you're Superman, you're relying on your own strength. But the power that God can give us is even more than the power of Superman or superhero. Do you believe that? Amen. You have to believe. Because if you don't believe, sabing us a word, toward us who believe. Hallelujah. Okay, isip isip tayo. Let's let's just think about it. Do we really want it? <laughs> Kasi sabi nga, di ba, sino ba yung Spider-Man? Great power comes great responsibility. So maybe we don't want to be responsible of, of bigger things. We just want to be so, so, we, I just want to come every Sunday, just sit there. I just want, yeah, just tug-tug. But there's more. God God's power is avail- available for you to do great things. And we always say greater things are yet to be done. Greater things are yet to come. Yeah. How can you expect greater things if you don't expect the power of God to move through you and in you? Amen? So the mighty power of God toward us who believe. And you know what? Again, we go back. This is the prayer of Paul. Prayer. It starts with prayer. And sabi sa verse 20, which he worked. Imagine the power, the power of saints, the power, our power of God through in us, through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Nabubulol ako. Amen. So, which he worked, verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So, what power is this? So, I'm, I've been talking great power that we can do greater things. But what really, what power it is that God is talking here? First and foremost, the power of God that resurrected Jesus from the grave. Hallelujah. Who can do that? If our God is not powerful, if our God is not able, then Jesus would remain dead and buried until now. When you think about power, you must think of the resurrection first. And what else if God can raise Jesus from the dead? 
if God can raise Jesus from the dead, what else? Is there anything difficult for God? There is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. Amen? So what is it? What do you need God's power with? Huh? What do you need God's power? Like, like right now, what do I need? I need to overcome this weakness. I need to overcome this uh, uh, addiction. I need to overcome this depression. I need to overcome this anger. Like you need anger management. I need to overcome this sickness. I need to overcome this limitation. I need to overcome my stage fright. I need to overcome my self-awareness. Like, like, lagi lang sarili mo, iniisip mo. Like, you need to overcome. If God can raise Jesus from the grave, what kind of power is that? And is that we always hear that same power? Same power that rose Jesus from the grave. Same power that is available to us. Amen? Same power that can work in us and through us. Hallelujah. Di ba sabi nga ni Jesus sa John? So that greater than this, you are able to do because I go to my Father. Do you think, ito isa to sa paborito kong ano eh, verse eh. You know, when Jesus said that greater than this, you are able to do. Imagine, what did Jesus do? Signs and wonder, miracles after miracles. And Jesus is saying to his disciples, to us believers, that we also are able to do this. Amen? It is the power of God in us. That is why. Why do we have this theme? Why do we have this cry out? We are empowered. Can you say you are empowered? Do you have the power of God? Amen. Hallelujah. You have the power of God. What do you need? What, what are you going to do with that power? We have to minister to people. Amen? Kasi sabi nga kanina, di ba? Our faith with God and then our vert, um, horizontal relationship we need to minister we need to share this we need to let other people know that there is god who is able to answer or help them you know sabi natin lagi that this world is chaotic world this world is is sick you know talagang there's battles everywhere and so what do we need we need god only God can help us in our situation, in, in, in times that right now, in times like this. We need God flooding, sabi nga, in, in, in. Yung end times na mga teaching, rumors of wars, you know, famine, all these things that we are encountering. But the end is not yet. We are still here. And so what do we need? We need to be empowered by God in order for us to overcome all these things. Hallelujah. The power. We've heard many preachings about the power of resurrection. Amen. And where did it get us? Honestly, right now. Hallelujah. We need to believe. We need to believe. We need to have this in our system. Amen. That we are empowered servants of God, ministers of God, children of God. We are empowered. So, how is that when we are empowered? We cannot even invite our friends to church. We cannot even invite our loved ones to church, our family. We cannot even pray for our... That's what happened because 
stubborn, you know? But instead, because you are empowered, utter, like blessing, you know? Pray, pray for that person. Instead of, of, of speaking to them bad words or discouraging, pray for them because you are empowered. God did not empower you to not do anything at all. There is a reason why God is empowering His people so that the glory, the glory of God can be displayed in this place, wherever you are. And we go back again to that situation. Do you think the world needs God? Do you think the world needs God? It's, it should start from us. Hallelujah. It should start from us. If we don't have this burden yet, if we are not that empowered yet, we pray. We pray. Sabi nga, the greatness of God, the great power of God. Let's, um, um, Jeremiah 10, 12. Let's see this. It is He who made the earth by His power. So, resurrection. But even the, from the very beginning, you know, if you look at the creation of God, you would wonder what kind the power you you would be amazed of the power of God. It is He who made the earth by His power, by His power. Word nga lang niya, di ba? Word lang niya nag-exist. The world exists. Who established the world by His wisdom, by His understanding? Stretch out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and he brings forth the wind from the storehouses. That is the power of our God. When you think of it, this so limited mind cannot comprehend how powerful God is. When you look at the vastness of the universe, search in the Bible. Yesterday we have this um, um, parang mga discussion. Pag-usap lang. It's about the wars in the Israel, and we been we were talking about Moses and my brother-in-law and my nephew. I, and I told them, if you want the history, read your Bible. If you want the history, if you know what happened before, read your Bible. Because the Bible is his story and everything that's happening around us, around the world, has something to do. That is in the Bible. Because God knows everything and anything. Do you want to be empowered? Do you want to know more about God? Read your Bible and you will be amazed. You know, that the God that you believe, the God that you serve is this. And you will look at yourself, who am I? Who am I that I should think highly of myself? Who am I that I should do this? Iba si Moses nga ulit, nasabi ko rin last time, ganun din ako. Lord, who am I to represent you? Who am I to speak about you? But God handpicked us. God has an assignment for us. That is the very reason that He is empowering us. Because we have something to do. We have work to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Sabi sa Romans 1.20 For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power, and divine nature. Nakita natin? Can you agree with this word? Ha? Huh? Hindi lang clouds ang nakikita natin. No? We've seen the work of God or your eyes are still closed. You're still not aware of the creation of God, of the power of God, of who, not an inkling, inkling, 
thinking of what or who God is. Sabi dito, ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. We have seen the creation of God through everything God made. They can clearly see His invisible qualities. Hindi mapagkakaila. Hindi matatabunan. It is only God. So sabi mo, it's only God. Sabi nga, His eternal power and His divine nature. And so, anong kasunod dyan? So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Naririnig, do we hear this, church? We don't have excuse because we've experienced God. We have no excuse for not, not knowing. Oh, I didn't know. You know, that when the situation arises, you don't know what to do. You, we should know. Amen? Or maybe it's not revealed to you, but you know what you should do. You should seek the Lord. You should pray. You should calm yourself. Be still in the presence of God which you don't know because God will reveal it to you. And no matter, hindi mo man experience, hindi mo man ma-comprehend, but you know that in time of Moses, God opened the Red Sea for the people to walk past through the dry land. You know that the Jordan Re River was also parted for the people to cross to get to their promised land. And you know that by the shout, of the people with, with Joshua leading, the walls of Jericho came down, fell down. You know those, that Jesus, hmm? Jesus rose from the dead. That Jesus feed, fed 5,000 with just those few bread and fish. Amen? Don't we know that? We've heard so many things already about God, the signs and wonders, and the power of God. And so, we don't have an excuse not to know. Amen? Like when your circumstances arise, you should know that God is able to help you. You should know that you just run to the tower of God because He is your strong tower and He will help you in your time of need. Hallelujah. But then, in Matthew 22, it says here, verse 29, Jesus replied, your mistake is that you don't know the scripture. Make it personal. Although Jesus is telling this to his disciples, because you know, or to the, 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 those ones that are questioning him about resurrection, this passage is about they're questioning Jesus who would be the husband to be with the, the woman that married the seven brothers. Ang sagot ni Jesus is that your mistake is that you don't know the scripture. Sometimes we ask questions without really knowing because if you know, you won't ask anymore because you would understand. You would know. Your, your mistake is that you don't know the scripture and you don't know the power of God. So really, prayer in reading the word of God is the very sure thing that we can have the power of God. Very simple, very basic things. You don't need to enroll in... in, in um, um, Mga, uh, ang tawag nito, enroll sa school, theology, you don't need to attend all these uh, um, mga gatherings, you know, mga crusade. You don't need to read. Well, it helps. It enhances your, your, your uh, knowledge or your experience with God. But the basic thing you do is Pray before, like, go to the presence of God. Read the word of God. We can do that, right? Can we do that? Yes. Can we do that? Yes. 
Amen. We can do that. Everyone can do that. You know, our God is so thoughtful. Hindi lang siya faithful, thoughtful. Alam niya kasi yung kaya natin at hindi natin kaya. Alam niya yung, He knows our limitation. That is why He is making things simple for us. It's very simple. And prayer at all times, anywhere. You don't need to go travel so far for you to pray. You don't need, oh, you don't have the Bible. Maybe our, our um, reason is that I don't have a Bible. Sino walang Bible dyan? At walang cellphone. Kasi, kung wala kang Bible, kasi nga lahat may cellphone. Hindi lahat, oh my, my, imagine, I, it just dawned on me. Hindi lahat may Bible, but lahat, my cell phone. Wow. Can you imagine that? Hindi lahat my Bible, but lahat my cell phone. So it's a good thing because we're modernized. So we're able to use, use itong mga, mga gadgets that we have right now. We can take it back to God. Use it for God. So what is there in your cell phone? You have Bible apps. You can listen to live stream, like preaching. You can listen to YouTube preachings, mga sharing, testimonies. Let's use our gadget to enhance, to, to help us in our relationship with God and not to take away, take us away from, from God. I think mostly that our gadget is the culprit of us not doing our quiet time, right? Because we're always on our cell phone. Well, use your cell phone to use or to listen to Spotify. Praise and worship. Amen? Let's use our gadget to help us being empowered by God. Hallelujah. So here in 2 Peter 1.3, by His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the one who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. Again, by His divine power. Whose divine power? God's power. He has given us everything. Amen? So, we cannot say no. There's no excuse for us not to enhance or to develop our relationship to be more intimate with God. We have received all of this by coming to know Him. Coming to know Him. So, there is really that knowing Knowing God, knowing what to do, knowing the power of God, knowing what's available for us. Hallelujah. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> prayer of knowing, Paul's prayer for the wisdom, for the power, and the glory of God <clears throat> to help us, you know, to really make us rise into the next level of our relationship with God. To exist like rooted, deeply rooted in the one who suffered for us who suffered death and reconciled us to God through that. Amen? It is a prayer here, sabi, it is a prayer of Paul that their lives of faith, active in love, would be established upon and molded by this wisdom and subversive power of God. This is Paul's prayer for his disciples, 
for the disciples, for the followers of Jesus. And it is true. It is needed. It is needed. Power, prayer works. You know, let me give you a little bit of my testimony. So, um, for those who have known me from a long time ago, like, I recently, I've really lost weight because I've gone through, sabi nga ng doctor, changes of life. Gone through changes of life. Back in November, I went for a blood test. I went to my doctor because there, I know that there's something, there's not something that is not right with me. So I found out that my blood sugar, I've shared this before, but uh, let me share this again. My blood sugar went through the roof, 11. And so I was prescribed with medicine right away because the doctor said to protect my brain and my heart because my sugar is too high, way too high. So after that, I went away with the food. I changed my diet right away, and so it helps. So, but I stopped taking medication because there's a reaction. I always have stomach ache, and so the doctor stopped it. Towards no I started November, so around uh, towards the end of December, I stopped the medication. And then February comes, I need to do the blood test again after three months. And so my blood sugar went down to 7.3. And last November, I had the uh, ultrasound also in my abdomen. And I, it was found out that I have cyst. It's five, it's big on my left and my right um, ovary. And so, but the doctor said, let's not do anything yet. So, and I'm not, I'm not so like, like uh, worried or in a hurry to do something about it. I just went still before God. I've let the leaders know, I've let the brethren know, the prayer warriors, and we've been praying, and they're always praying for me, the prayer warriors. I need that. I need, everybody needs prayer, but all the more, the leader, especially when you stand in front, always. And so, <clears throat> I prayed, it, it, it did not really, like concerned me because I know, I know the power of God. I know the prayer. I know the power of prayer, and I just need to be still. So, but then the one thing is that I have. I know that these things are are harmful for me. So I stop. Sabi nga, madami nga na bless sa akin eh. <laughs> They are blessed that I really stopped eating sugar. My coffee is black from then on. I don't take cake i don't have like bubble tea ice cream all those sweets no sweets at all even the grapes because it's high in sugar i don't i have blueberries and my 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 cannon before is like only rice but now only maybe once a day sometimes a day without rice and my bread is zero sugar so so that's why when I went to, after three months, I went to blood test again, my sugar went down to 7.3. That was February, like before mid-February. So three months. Now, I'm due again, I, I, I'm due again for another, like nag, nag ultrasound ako last, last week for, to check the cyst. And the left one that was big is gone. It's gone. The right one before that was five point something centimeters, now is three point something. And in six months, I know it's gone. And my sugar, my doctor said, my gynecologist said, you should take the medicine for your sugar. No, I'm, I'm uh, no, it's, it, it, I'm good. 
I'm expecting that it's normal comes May when I do my blood test again. So you know, prayer works. That is my testimony. So when things just like the testimony of our sister earlier, you just have to trust God. You have to know. You have to know who God is. You have to know whom the God what what's like the God that you run to, that you prayed to. You have to know. Hallelujah. Because if you know, you know what to do. You run to God every time there is a situation that you are encountering. You run to God. And you you are not discouraged. You will not be discouraged. You will not be downhearted, downtrodden. Amen. So what do we do to know God? We read our Bible. We pray. Sabi nga sa kanta, I sought the Lord and He heard and He answered. I sought the Lord and He heard and He answered. That's all we have to do. We have to seek the Lord. And so church, hindi kayo, let's not wait or let's Let's respond to the word of Jesus that you don't know because you don't know the scripture. So you don't know the power of God. Amen? So we have to seek the Lord. Let us all stand and let's continue to worship the Lord. And let's declare, let's have a decision right now that we will seek the Lord in all the days of our life. Sabi nga sa, sa life verse, the favorite one, this is my life verse. Seek the Lord. Seek God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Are you ready to, are you ready to seek the Lord? Are you going to seek the Lord in your situation? Hallelujah. We can start now. We can start now seeking the Lord. You can worship the Lord. You can tell Him, I want you, Lord. I sought the Lord. And you know, when you seek the Lord, you will find Him. He will hear you and He will answer you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Church, church, 
let's declare that you know us the prayer let it come from the bottom of your heart believe that believe believe in that that as you seek the Lord you can find him he is right here whatever it is that you need God of whatever it is that you need help God with seek him just like that song that you're singing I sought the Lord make make that decision right now seek the Lord I bet you I bet you that's the best decision that you could ever make right now to put your trust in God put your trust in God he is the God who is faithful who he, he is the God who is the same yesterday and forever you can put your trust in him it is very true he will never fail you I encourage you right now even those who are joining us online put your trust in God seek God in everything in your life because he is so faithful he will never fail you he is not like a man that he should lie when God says so it will come to pass his promises will come to pass his promises are true amen people of God so put your trust in God seek him first and foremost seek him with all your heart with all your mind amen let's put our trust not you know Egyptian put their trust in horses in 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 riches maybe this world that we are in right now is depending on the riches of this world but not us our dependency is upon our God amen so let's put our trust and you will see you will see wait for God to prove himself to you that he will never fail you he will never abandon you he will never leave you I encourage you that is the best thing that we can do trust in God who has everything trust in God who created the heavens and the earth and everything in it trust in God who has the immeasurable greatness power that is available to us who believe hallelujah hallelujah God thank you thank you that you will prove yourself once again oh God to your people you cannot wait to prove yourself to show yourself oh God how wonderful you are how majestic you are how awesome you are how great you are in the lives of your people hallelujah we just need to trust in you oh God and we thank you we thank you God that we will see your power at work in the lives of your people in Jesus name we pray and declare amen and amen <laughs>